Sonic games have been ported into collections and updated compilations over and over, both on consoles and handhelds. Yet with all the collections we got on the likes of the PSP, Switch, and more, it seems that Sega never wanted to port Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles to new platforms. But thankfully, they finally did. A collection that's a fair bit controversial with its price point? Let's take a look. Here is my review of Sonic Origins for the Nintendo Switch. When it comes to gameplay, this is a collection of four classic Sonic titles. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 2, and Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles the lock-on completed version of Sonic 3. Before we really dive into the games, is there anything different here with the different iterations? Obviously having Sonic 3 and Knuckles in here is great and the main reason for most longtime Sonic fans to grab this, since we haven't really had Sonic 3 since what? The Genesis Collection on the PlayStation 3? But regardless, when you go into the main menu, you can track through the games individually, and there's also a museum mode for the new animated intros, though interestingly enough, for all of you binge fans, there's also a mission mode. This lets you play all of the games in the collection one after another as if they were just one game. Go to the end of Sonic 1 and you go straight into Sonic CD and a 2 and the list goes on. This mode also comes with stage-based missions with special rules if you don't want to just go on a crazy binge marathon. Now when you go into each title, you have two different modes to choose from, Anniversary Mode and Classic Mode. Though this really is just a matter of aspect ratio and a bit of a limitation, at least at first. Anniversary Mode has the game altered for a widescreen experience, while Classic gives you that old 4-3 ratio that you would have had on that older system with some borders on the side to fill up the screen. But let's talk about what's different here. In each of these games, you can play as more characters than you could originally. While Amy being on the box art isn't playable in any form here, you can trek through Sonic 2 with not only Sonic, Tails, Sonic, and Tails, but you can also choose the lock-on variants for Knuckles as well as Knuckles and Tails. You can even go back and play through Sonic 1 as Knuckles, something that was initially considered for lock-on technology back in the day, but the original developers scrapped it because it just felt wrong. Well, now you can do that thing that just felt wrong, having Knuckles glide and climb through the Sonic 1 adventure. But it is worth noting that these extra characters are seemingly only available in Anniversary Mode. If you go into Sonic 2's Anniversary Character Select, you get all those great options, whereas the Classic Mode Character Select only gives you the default Sonic and Sonic and Tails options. But most of these games still have the little cheat debug and sound test menu where you can modify a bunch of stuff about the game. Just put a button combination in at the title menu and you can do stage select, modify items, or change whatever character you want, including the ones that are not available on Classic Mode's character select. Though the sound test cheats are really the only crazy collection or emulator-esque features we have, there are no filter options like Sonic Media had, just button combos to use cheats for level jumping and character swapping at least outside of Sonic CD. Unfortunately, that game's cheats were not brought into this collection. Now, when you start playing the games, they feel really good. They're the same great platformers around speeds, dodging pitfalls, and just a little bit of puzzle solving that they always were. Controls are nice and responsive, pretty much no input lag when you're platforming around, and despite there being no smoothing filter option, they do look nice as recreated versions of those older games. And there's one handicap feature built into the game. When you go into special stages to get the Chaos Emeralds and fail, you can spend collectible coins you can find in Anniversary Mode to retry those stages. The only thing I'll nitpick about the gameplay is that the special stages will sometimes have weird input lag that the rest of the games don't. Controls are flawless when platforming around, but the running orb grid stages have a noticeable amount of lag when turning on the grid. And that's all I have to say for that, so let's go into content and length. That $40 price tag has a lot of people a little weird about it, myself included. I didn't buy Sonic Origins until it was on sale for half price. You do have four full games to trek through, but that's still only going to get you about eight hours of play. And that brings us to presentation. Visually, the games look good, but they definitely wanted a more retro look to it than the more vibrantness of Sonic Mania. The color shades are geared more towards the Genesis, which is weird since Mania was made to look like the Genesis games. But if you look closely, this is a screenshot of Green Hill Zone 1 from Sonic Mania. And here is the same zone, same character combinations from the Origins version of Sonic 1, and you can see the color shades are noticeably different. Sonic himself being a much darker shade of blue. 
And with performance, gameplay is good, right up there at 60 frames per second. While some people are complaining that the game's main menu only runs at 30 FPS, I really see that as a non-issue. It's great where it counts, when you're running around and platforming as Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. It's also worth noting that a lot of the bugs and issues this collection had at launch, from incorrect names in the museum, textures not loading properly, to issues with the Tails AI and Sonic 2 not respawning properly, have been fixed in a patch as of last year. I've got nothing else to say about performance, so let's go into battery life. Sonic Origins gives the original model two to three hours, the light gets two and a half to three hours, and the V2 and OLED models get four and a half to five and a half hours. In conclusion, Sonic Origins brings four classic adventures to the Switch all in one collection without being separated like Sega ages, without the input lag of the Switch's Genesis collection, and brings us the first console release of Sonic 3 and Knuckles in many years. Now on the downside, the lack of filter and other options is a bit strange, and the input lag in the Orb minigame takes getting used to. But this is still a collection of very good Sonic games with a lot fewer issues now than we had at launch. If you can take that price point or grab it on sale, it's a fun collection to play. Reviews to go rates Sonic Origins for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.